cops have read it, what is the saddest arrest that you've ever had to make? It wasn't an arrest, but I still get sad thinking about it. There was this local elderly gentleman, probably in his 90s, who was no longer able to drive properly. He was in several accidents, car v, sign slash walls, and was one incident away from having his license taken. Well, one day we find his license plate embedded in a freshly dented car. Another officer and I went to his home to speak with him. From here on I'll refer to the driver as Oscar. Close bracket. Oscar wasn't home, but we had a long conversation with his boyfriend. He told us all about how his happy life with Oscar, and how Oscar was the one in charge of bringing food home, since he was the only one with a license. We went back to the PD, after we were done talking. Oscar was already there when we arrived. Another officer had found him, and was speaking to him. We watched as the officer carefully explained to Oscar that he was in a car accident, and I don't think I can properly explain the look of confusion on Oscar's face. He had no idea he hit another car, and he looked at the bent plate like it was from another world. At the end, the officer told Oscar he needed to give up his license. His hand shook like crazy the entire time. He tried to pull his license out his wallet over and over, but he just couldn't get it out. The officer ended up doing it for him. In the end, the three of us just stared at each other for a while. I had to arrest a guy that had embezzled money from a large corporation over the course of 10 months. How he did it was every week the store would have a cash deposit, so he would make it late and take money off the top of it. In order to make it whole again he would take money from the following week's deposit to make it whole again. This went on and on until he stole up to $32,000. So when I arrived to the storefront to arrest him the store's asset protection agent was telling me how he made up this story about his daughter was sick and how he was using the money for hospital bills and he was gonna pay it back. So course I think wow that's a really sad story but maybe he was just trying to get away with it. Well when I walk up to him he stands up and puts his arms behind his back, so I cuff him. Sure enough during my search I find bills from his daughter's hospital and to make it worse an eviction notice from his landlord. Not a police officer, but involved in the CPS system. Police were called to an apartment by a relative of the occupant. She could hear the two young children inside, but could not reach their mother and the kids wouldn't open the door. Neighbors had reported the children were often left to play alone on the playground, sometimes for hours at a time. The police opened the door to find a two-year-old and nine-month-old home alone. The state of their diapers indicated they had been unchanged in over 24 hours. There was no visible food that the two-year-old had access to, and clearly nothing for the nine-month-old. There were cleaning chemicals that had been spilled in the bathroom. The children were put into protective care. The mother returned to the apartment 36 hours after the police intervened and was arrested. Mother refused to meet with her court-ordered attorney, refused all services, counseling, rent assistance, etc. And did not attend any hearings. After 18 months in the care of a responsible family member, the mother's rights were terminated. As someone who isn't a social worker, the story of these kids kind of messed me up for a little bit. I can only imagine what social workers have seen. After a search warrant, a man was arrested for drugs and guns and taken away. Only other person in the house was a one-year-old baby. As a new father at the time, I held the baby until CPS came. Shivering, he held onto me for dear life. He was wearing only a dirty diaper, with no other diapers in the house. No food in the fridge. I cleaned him up and wrapped him in a towel. No blankets in the house. I almost started crying. My uncle is a cop. He arrested a 15 year old girl for killing her bully. The bully was a 16 year old girl who insulted slash beat this girl every day, but used to be friends with her. The 15 year old attacked her with a razor blade and hid the body in an abandoned well under the floor at her house. Needless to say, since life isn't a movie the body was found a week later by cops who heard the 16 year chase the 15 year home from school full story and why the court decided to not go easy on her was it wasn't just self-defense the 15 year old successfully knocked out the 16 year with a blunt object in the backyard drug her to the basement possibly in a tarp and then up to an hour later without calling 911 took a disposable razor from a toolbox and proceeded to stab the unconscious 16 year in the stomach a few times 
was embedded with cops as a public radio producer three years ago, so I got her to see a bunch of pretty sad arrests. The highlights. Guy got dumped by his girlfriend, so he called the cops and claimed she was suicidal. They showed up, and she had the choice of either being carted off to a hospital for psyche evil, or being taken into protective custody. Woman cornered and beat the shit out of another woman in a 7 to 11 parking lot over the attention of a used car mechanic who hit on one of them, while waiting in line at a Dollar Tree. Older guy, 50s slash 60s, was arrested after showing up at an apartment, and using one of his crutches to smash in a window to gain entry. Turns out he had been released from the local jail that afternoon, tried to go back to his last apartment, only to find out other people were living there, and then smash the window out. His release papers were in his back pocket, when he was searched. I know cops get a lot of shit, and rightfully so in some cases, but man they have to deal with a metric crap ton of bummers. I have finally found an opportunity to tell this story. So a few years ago, I got a call at a scatter park about some kids who were smoking weed. Age was never specified, but when I got there, my partner waited in the car and I looked around until I picked up a funky smell in the air and managed to follow it to behind a little shed at the park. Behind it were four little kids, passing a bag around, huffing whatever was inside. I mean little kids. Like, 7, slash 8, slash 9. Two of them ran off, as soon as they saw me approach. The two that were left looked really ragged, beaten up, smelled like they hadn't showered in weeks, and you could tell from their faces, how fucked up they were on whatever it was, that they were huffing. I called my partner over, since I saw, and confirmed that one of the kids had a knife on him, although clearly too fucked up to use it. I honestly froze, and teared up a little bit, looking at these children who were probably homeless, or didn't have a good home, to go to at all, looking up at me with their doped up deer in the headlights look on their faces. My partner was the one who took them away, while I picked up the bag out of curiosity, to see what it was that was in that brown paper bag. I'll never forget what I saw that day. It was really really saddening and it honestly brings back some tears writing this out now. In that bag was the serious tag that op forgot. Cop for 20 years. Was Christmas and I was driving down the street when I see a car blow a red light pretty bad. Stop the car and it's a single mom with two kids. About 6 and 8. It's obvious they don't have a lot of money. Mom has a felony no bail warrant. So I take mom and book her into jail and her kids got to go with CPS. On Christmas morning. A Christmas hasn't gone by in 18 years there I don't think about that car stop and how that family, both mom and kids, is today. I worked in M's and a cop told me this story. They get a call for someone being drunk and disorderly. He was naked and running around a hotel pool area, screaming. Since he was clearly not in his right mind, they got an ambulance to rule out whether this was drugs or psychosis, diabetes, etc. In the ambulance, the guy suddenly became more coherent and explained that the last thing he remembered was going to a restaurant to meet a man he'd connected with online. Then, he woke up in a strange hotel room, naked, and with injuries indicating sexual assault. The date had spiked his drink with a chemical that causes amnesia going back before you even ingest it, then raped him. When he woke up, his panic slash horrified reactions got the police called. The cop said it was a valuable lesson in the fine line between suspect and victim. Not a cop but a witness. Used to work at a movie rental shop. Some guy walks and goes around to each section acting casual. I see him pocket a movie and tell the owner. The owner tackles the guy as he is running out the door. If anyone doesn't understand them para rental copy is licensed differently and cost $300 or at least it did back then. Which made this guy's theft a felony. If he had stolen the for sale copy would have been a lower crime since it's only valued at $20. Was this idiot's third felony which made it 20 to 25 years. Imagine being this guy in prison so what you in for? Quintessential note, I'm not a cop, but that said. I work alongside our city's police department in response to medical emergencies, and one arrest I saw has always stuck with me as a little bizarre and a little sad. We were dispatched to an injury from a fall, and arrived at an outlying strip mall Taco Bell parking lot to treat a really chipper and loud 20-something woman who was supine, stargazing almost, chatting with the police. 
She was a known entity one of the young local heroin addicts with a record of quite a few encounters, though this was my first time meeting her. As the story goes, somehow she was evading the police and tumbled down a steep embankment, waded across a derelict dried canal, and realized in the adjourning parking lot that she was injured. It was an easy transport, noteworthy to me, because of how chatty and chipper she remained through the encounter. She joked with the police officer about nearly getting away, and they compared it to prior pursuits they'd had together. <laughs> had to arrest a guy, because his ex-wife, reported him for domestic abuse falsely over divorce slash money disagreement. So she rolled up in a new car, to point his location to us, and this guy was already paying half of his salary in child support, and living in a dump. So eventually they started arguing, and she was I don't care, if it is not true, I'm gonna drag you to court until you pay for everything. And the worst was, he had a dog, that he had to leave in the apartment, and he didn't have anybody to call. Ended up driving to his relative after the shift, to give them the apartment keys. Not a cop, but used to work at a halfway house. This one felon was particularly nice, just was glad to be out of jail, and get out into the world again. He wasn't allowed any vacations or visits for 6 months, but got granted a vacation for Christmas who he wasn't able to see in over a year. He was anticipating this so was working his, but off to try and afford presents for his little girl as most of his paycheck was going to the state. On Christmas Eve we were doing checks on him, making sure he was at his house and his little girl, 627, answered the phone. We asked if Bob was around, and she said no, he was at the casino. We had to call his PO and my boss, and they told us to go get him. He called back within prob 5 minutes, and said he was at the house the whole time. When we went to grab him, he said that his brother, named Rob, was the one at the casino, and it was misunderstanding. His brother Rob was there as well, and showed me his receipts, that it was in fact him. I tried to call my boss, but it was already too late. Bob clutched his daughter, and started crying and said sorry I can't be around for Christmas day, to see all your presents, but Santa is coming. He told me so. Yay I cried later that night. Not the one doing the arresting, just a witness to the slow motion disaster. At the VA hospital a vet drove himself in with crushing chest pain. Of course he didn't call 9, double 1, they never want to ask for help. Once he got to the air it was clear, based on his EKG he was having a massive heart attack. So he gets whisked away by the cardiologists, to have some stents put in his coronaries. At some point during the commotion, he realizes his legally owned, fully licensed concealed weapon is in his jacket. Needless to say as he was dying of his heart attack it wasn't at the top of his to-do list, to empty his pockets, before leaving the house. He alerted the nurse immediately, and asked her to have an officer come and secure it. A few hours after he made it back to his room to recover, one of the junior officers shows up with a summons and a ticket for $2,500. He apologized to the old guy, and said he hadn't wanted to do it, the supervisor made him, but didn't have the guts to do it himself. The patient was in tears, he'd been saving, what little he could to help his daughter move closer, so he could help take care of the new grandbaby. Patients immediately post heart attack generally don't benefit from this kind of added stress. Friend's dad is a retired detective. Not sure why he did, but one evening when my friends and I went over for a BBQ, he joined us, and was a bit drunk, and told us a story of how he and his partner responded to a home invasion crime scene in a more affluent middle class suburb. Father and two young kids all brutally bludgeoned to death with a baseball bat. The house wasn't even ransacked, and the only thing stolen was a big screen TV and a video game console. They eventually caught the two perps as they were still fleeing on the streets with carrying the big screen TV in public. Both were 19 to 20 year olds. They eventually confessed that they just want the TV and video game console when they would often see the kids playing it on through big open living room window when they walked by the neighborhood and decided to kill them to not leave witnesses. The worst thing he told us was, less than an hour after the crime scene was taped off, the wife came home in a taxi, after being away for a week on a business trip, to find crime scene tape, police cars and coroner vehicles surrounding her house. Another worst part was, that was supposedly his last month on the job before retiring. 
I work at a juvenile detention facility. Basically my place is like the county jail for 18 and under, sometimes up to 21. It's a shame when kids come in and have been beat up by their parents or others, even worse when they come in with no shoes or no shirt. Really sad when it's both, which is more frequent than I care to say. I'm sure it's pretty sad when a police officer has to go arrest a kid who has surely been beaten and neglected. Like the kid has no chance, was never taught anything right. Makes me really sad and really pissed. I once had to arrest a young woman for assaulting her boyfriend. They had been drinking in a pub all day because she had terminal bowel cancer and lashed out at him for trying to help her cope. She refused his support and later tried to throw her colostomy bag at me. That was interesting. I've been working with law enforcement off and on for over a decade, but was never a licensed peace officer. A police chief in a suburban town got a call from one of his rookies who had responded to a call about a full-term fetus being found by the family dog in a burlap sack in the backyard. The teenagers of the house, who were brother and sister, had a child together, concealed the pregnancy, and immediately buried it after it was born, hiding all of this from the parents. When the dog found the buried fetus, the parents called the police. The rookie officer had to confirm that there was indeed a fetus in the sack but couldn't. He called his chief, begging him to come and confirm. The chief did and took the teenagers to jail. It still haunts them both. My parents used to rent a house to a weird couple. They had something like four kids in a relatively small house. It was that kind of couple that when they had lice, they shaved every one bald. Actually happened. Child Protective Services came to their door, and since the house was pretty much next to us I heard slash saw how that went. It's a couple of people from Child Protective Services, and about two thirds cops who take away the children, mother creaming like she's dying inside. I can't image how shit that job must be. Horror to see, but to be a cop at that moment, that's harsh.